Malaya, 1950. The British are fighting a war on terror against a guerrilla army led by Chin Peng, determined to establish a communist republic of Malaya. His guerrilla fighters attack at will, striking anywhere at any time. Since the beginning of the emergency, the communists have launched 2,716 attacks and killed nearly 700 innocent civilians. Since the beginning of the emergency, the communists have launched 2,716 attacks and killed nearly 700 innocent civilians. On the British side, the new Director of Operations, Lieutenant General Harold Briggs, comes up with an ambitious master plan to smash the communist war machine. To get food, money and information, Chin Peng's fighters rely on Chinese squatters who live in shanty villages located on jungle fringes and so are vulnerable to exploitation by the communists. Their numbers increase dramatically during the Japanese occupation. Briggs decides to target the communists indirectly by severing their links to the squatters. We have more than 600,000 squatters all over Malaya, and we are accusing them of helping the communists. Give them protection, bring them together, and you will find that they will stop helping the communists. Briggs' idea is to move every one of these squatters to newly built resettlement villages, built on land provided by the Malay sultans. In theory, these villages will protect the squatters, cutting them off from the communists. Briggs must work fast. So hundreds of security units race across Malaya to prepare the squatters' exodus, whether they want to move or not. We had these uh, military lorries, three-time lorries all there, ready to help them. We had British soldiers, soldiers from the Commonwealth, our policemen all helping. They bring in their ducks, they bring in their dogs, they bring in their pigs, everything. The communists, realizing that their supply lines are under threat, try to persuade the squatters to stay put. The communist terrorists started their all-out propaganda and the squatters believed them. They said, now look, in Germany and all, millions were sent to the concentration camp were killed. You now, the government is taking you all to concentration camp, all of you will be killed. The communist terrorists started their all-out propaganda and the squatters believed them. They said, now look, in Germany and all, Millions were sent to the concentration camp were killed. You now, the government is taking you all to concentration camp. All of you will be killed. So as a result of that, quite a lot of people resisted. So they had to be forcibly brought out onto the road and taken there. Despite these teething problems, people are soon on the move all over Malaya. They travel by road, by boat, and train. In just a few months, tens of thousands of Chinese Malayans have been moved. When the settlers arrive at their allotted resettlement areas, they come face to face with the harsh realities of the Briggs plan. First, they must build their own homes. Worse, the new resettlement villages are gated communities. The squatters are effectively prisoners. They can only leave and re-enter at regulated times, and there's a strictly enforced curfew from dusk to dawn. Night was a time of menace and danger. Anyone caught outside the village perimeter could and did become targets. It was a moonlit night. I saw a shadow. It is outside the 
settlement area and in the curfew. Nobody should be there. Who's cool sweat coming? Because it's not easy to shoot a man. But then I was to shoot. Uh, I pressed the trigger and then after that all my men shot. In the camps, everyday life is dominated by rules. Access to food is rigorously controlled to stop it falling into the hands of the communists. But it soon becomes apparent that the Briggs plan has a flaw. Settlers are provided with land to make some sort of a living, but as soon as they are outside the camps, they fall prey to the communists again, lurking in the jungle. The communists wait for them in the jungles. And when you're tapping rubber, they come there and say, where's the rice you promise? Where are the medicines? Where are the bandages? And various other things. So if these people don't give anything, they are told that if you next come and you don't bring, you'll be killed. The communists wait for them in the jungles. And when you're tapping rubber, they come there and say, where's the rice you promise? Where are the medicines? Where are the bandages? And various other things. So if these people don't give anything, they are told that if you next come and you don't bring, you'll be killed. But the communists persist, forcing many settlers to find ways of smuggling food out of the closely guarded camps. They had ingenious ways of hiding with the rice, they put it inside a bicycle pump, and then they are let expel. They had false bottom, they put rice there, everything, medicines. <laughs> If you see women, uh, women, most of them suddenly all became pregnant. Such <laughs> uh, Those have big brass, also such <laughs> It will inevitably take time to break the bond between villager and communist. And no one can be completely certain that the Briggs plan will work. For many, the end of 1951 will be remembered as the lowest point in the war. Few could imagine the situation getting worse. But at the beginning of October, fate deals the British a bitter and unexpected blow. On the 6th of October, 1951, Communist terrorists led by an especially brutal commander called Su Ma wait on the winding road leading to Fraser's Hill, a hill station. At 1 p.m., a police convoy appears, followed by a black Rolls Royce flying a Union Jack. Sumar opens fire, wounding several police officers and puncturing the tires of the rolls, which skews to a halt. A British gentleman emerges from the back. He is shot in the head. Sumar orders his men to escape. He has no idea that he has killed the British High Commissioner, Sir Henry Gurney. As the news spreads, the British are in shock. the head of the British colonial government had been killed by the communists. You know, my God, it would shake anybody up. After Gurney's murder, uh, the morale slumped among the, the local population as well as the, the British. Oh, we are very sad. The whole country was shocked. As the communists rejoice, the British war on terror faces its worst crisis yet. <laughs> <laughs>